Hi, my name is Tony Hula, and I worked on a distracted driving study with Dr. Alex Shaparo. And to, to start off, I want to tell you a little bit about how your brain works and how distractions can affect your brain, and then in turn how that will affect your performance on an additional task like driving. So first of all, we have to basically decode how the brain works. When you're receiving information into your brain in order to process it in the most effective way possible, we have different modalities. And each modality is basically co coded to handle a specific type of information. Our phonological loop is coded for linguistic information or auditory information. Uh, visual spatial sketch pad is coded for visual information, mental maps, and things like that. And your episodic buffer um, is coded for semantic memory for situations. It's basically like the difference between your interaction with a teacher or a fellow student when they're walking down the hall. You know how to present yourself, how you walk, how you shake hands, all that changes. And that's located in your episodic buffer. So with different modalities and limited resources to allocate towards those modalities, different levels of cognition have different effects on your performance. So a uh, maintenance level task would be a simple task that requires short-term memory and generally uh, maintaining information, just repeating it so that you don't forget it. Where manipulation requires basically permission from your central executive to use your memory to alter that information in order to be successful. And that would be like alphabetization. But um, basically, it's a lot easier to remember a shopping list than it is to try and remember the items that go into a recipe and the items that are in your refrigerator and try to manipulate all that information while you're trying to drive it would obviously have more detriment to your performance. So with different levels of cognition going into different activities, you have different levels of cognition left for additional stimulus. Basically, we want to be processing things top down. That relies on your previous experience. It relies on your knowledge for situations so that you can basically act accordingly to provide the best outcome. In, as opposed to the bottoms up processing, which is usually like your fear reaction, a startled response, things like that. And whenever you're driving, it could be the difference between noticing someone is perhaps swerving in their lane or something. You're either going to hang back or try to go around them quickly, and you're going to pay attention to that individual so that nothing happens, as opposed to a bottoms down process where you may just be driving and you're next to them and they're halfway in your lane before you realize it you're going to swerve and potentially hit a guardrail, causing you even more problems. So some differences with behavior and performance in distractions. Well, I mean, texting and driving is a behavior, so uh, people try to accommodate that by other behaviors. They try to drive slower or um, perhaps increase a following distance, but that leaves you in a position of vulnerability for uh, being cut off because you're impeding traffic or something like that. Um, there's obviously the obvious detriments to performance in your lane posi position and speed constancy, but a lot of times whenever people are distracted, they don't realize those impairments, so they don't believe in them, basically. Um, and a lot of, uh, I guess the performance detriments that people need to be aware of is your perception of hazards because you have to know something is a hazard in order to avoid it. And that goes into some of the ways that distractions affect your attention because you can essentially be driving blind if you're not expecting a stimulus that is present. Perhaps you're looking for cars on the road instead of bicycles or motorcycles or other pedestrians. Then there are instances in which they can be completely unseen. And that's the, actually, I just saw one in the news the other day where a biker was struck by a vehicle and they basically didn't even break for him. It was pretty bad news for the biker. Um, also, change blindness is inability to see major changes, but there's other changes, um, gradual changes, 
um, texture changes that can go in effect with driving. Perhaps if you go from paved to a dirt road, they may not realize it if they're not paying attention and there's obviously different driving practices for different road conditions. Um, some ways that distractions affect your eye movements is basically it limits them. Uh, you're not looking as far for things, you're not looking as often for things, so it impairs your ability to search for objects as well as um, limiting your use of safety instruments. If you're not looking all the way into your periphery, you're not looking at the mirrors or your speedometer. Uh, as far as multitasking goes, uh, people are inherently bad at multitasking. Research has shown this time and time again, but people still have this perception that if they practice hard enough, they can learn to multitask, but it, it just, it doesn't happen. And that's one thing that I want to kind of reiterate today because driving is already um, multitasking. We're looking for visual objects in a scene while we're trying to operate a motor vehicle that's doing multiple things at once and adding an additional task on top of that could severely impair performance. In fact, so much that people don't realize how much it's impaired. So for my study, we used a simulator and that was basically to, because it was a preliminary study, it provides enough information to be relatable and valid in an actual studies, and it's a lot cheaper. But uh, we tried to incorporate all of the steering wheels, the pedal, the, we used a real car seat and uh, a big screen TV. It was much larger than the screen in the picture. But we also tried to incorporate mirrors and make it as realistic as possible so that, so that people could relate the data ecologically to the real world. We um, broke our tasks into visual and auditory modalities and we tried to basically target specific levels of cognition in order to be able to distinguish where the performance was best and where it was worst. But for my experiment, I wanted to look at where we were performing the best so that we could incorporate that technology into cars rather than providing technology that's going to be potentially distracting and impair driving. So what we found, and I'll have to explain this a little bit because it's kind of confusing, but the mean, the first line here, the larger numbers are better because a larger number basically shows that you had a larger pattern of gaze. You looked farther into your periphery. And in the second column, standard deviation, a larger number is bad because a larger number shows there was a larger gap in between those glances. So basically what this information says is that for maintenance conditions, there was less detriment. In some cases, there was no detriment. For the verbal condition, we actually showed that performance increased over the control when there was no additional task. And I equated this to kind of an experimental effect where if there were additional resources that were untapped, people could allocate those to driving because they know they're being evaluated, they want to do as well as they can. Um, but we also supported previous findings where manipulation of information basically limited hazard detection and uh, visual tunneling, meaning they didn't look as far and they didn't notice the hazards as often. So some limitations for my study would have included the, uh, the fact that we had to use a simulator. It was an expedited study, but um, this could easily be adapted into the future into a, a real car with existing technology if we could equate those levels of cognition to different types of tasks. For example, holding a conversation versus, um, I don't know, trying to manipulate a conversation or come up with something, I mean, in, within that conversation, it would be basically your subject would change. And as well, I would like to add an episodic task for a more comprehensive evaluation because it has shown in the literature that episodic or uh, semantic memories can have an effect on driving performance. It was actually interesting. It was a, an arachnophobia study. They had people that were afraid of spiders and they sat them down in the car and basically had a, co a conversation about spiders just completely natural, like how do spiders make you feel? It wasn't anything specific, like, you know, imagine one crawling on you or anything creepy. 
It was just a general conversation about spiders and that severely affected performance on driving, which I thought was interesting. So um, that's pretty much what I have for you.